Morning, we begin with that historic verdict in Dallas. A jury sent a white cop to prison for 15 years for murdering a black teenager. District Attorney Faith Johnson's office prosecuted the case, and it is just one of the things we want to talk to her about in studio this morning. And joining the questioning, as always, is Bud Kennedy of the Star Telegram. Uh, Judge Johnson, good to see you. Good morning. Nice good morning, to Pat. see you. Good you, morning. You've had a few days to consider this verdict. Put it, the conviction in perspective here. It's the first time in 45 years that a police officer is convicted of murder. Yes, my perspective is that we were committed to justice for Jordan Edward. And I always want to say to people, and I say it everywhere I go, I love and support law enforcement, police officers. In fact, I pray for them every day. They're a part of my prayer. So it's not about police. It's about this guy, Roy Oliver, who murdered Jordan Edwards. So to, in that perspective, that's my focus. That was one of the reasons why we pursued this, because when we investigated it and we saw what it was, we knew that we had to pr prosecute Roy Oliver and we knew that we had to do it to, to the best of our ability, and that's exactly what we did. Prosecutors asked for 60 years. Uh, the jury gave them 15 years. I know you do not second-guess juries. No, we don't. Did they get it right in this case? You know, we don't say to them, you got it wrong, you got it right. What we say to them is that we respect your verdict. And uh, they found him guilty of murder, and we were so happy about that. We were elated. We were grateful, thankful. Uh, so we're not going to second-guess them exactly what you said, and we're going to respect it. And if you notice, even the family, they, we were a little disappointed. They were, but we figured that the jury heard everything, and they decided the verdict based on what they thought was best. I'm curious about one more aspect of this as well, too. Looking back at how this trial unfolded, what would you have done differently? I had the best team that I could have. I mean, we had seven prosecutors, including myself, trying this case. We wouldn't have done anything differently. We put everything we had in that case. And if you could recall, if you were following it, our, our team went out three and four and five and six and seven times talking to witnesses, going to the scene. We had our appellate lawyers walking with us throughout this whole process. We did a phenomenal job on behalf of the people of Dallas County. Faith, there are a lot of cases where prosecutors have worked just as hard, gathered just as much evidence in, in a, a shooting of an unarmed person, often African-American, but they didn't get a conviction. What was the element that made this case different? One of the things we were doing is we were constantly in prayer about this case. So we did more than just work it. We also, we've been praying about it for months and months and months. And I think when you look at the, the quality of the team, the quality of the people that was on this team, that made the difference. When, when it came to court, what was the element in this case that convinced the jury? I don't know what really convinced them, but I can tell you from our perspective in, the, in terms of the evidence, we have something in Texas, and maybe some of the other states may not have it. On the 19.02 B2, you can find someone guilty of murder if you believe that they intended to cause serious bodily injury, and in so doing, they committed an act clearly dangerous to human life and caused to death. So it was not just intentionally, unknowingly causing the death, but if that person did an act that was clearly dangerous to human life and, com and the person died as a result of it, there's murder. That's why the jury came back with murder. They did not accept the defense of third party because an innocent person was killed as opposed to the person the, 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 the officer claimed that he was actually protecting. Faith, let's switch gears and talk about something else for a moment. The Pennsylvania Attorney General uh, and, and a grand jury there released a report about sex abuse in that state. The Texas Attorney General doesn't investigate criminal cases in, in this state. As you know, it, it, it's left up to the district attorney's offices. Have you seen anything concerning to you locally about the news out recently about the problems in the, the, uh, with, with priests in the uh, Diocese of Dallas? In fact, anything we, concerning to you? In fact, we had a couple of letters. Uh, people contacted us in terms of whether or not we believe that something like that is going on in Dallas. And I immediately contacted my head of my child abuse unit. We we're very concerned about any kind of possible child abuse in Dallas County. I have a special unit that we started, and I'm telling you, I'm so proud of that 
unit. I have a, a great prosecutor who's heading that unit. So we're already looking into whether or not we should also look at some issues here in Dallas County. Do you see anything over there in the diocese that, that uh is a red flag for you that you might want to put an investigator on? Well, the problem is no one has come to us in terms of a complaint. So no we're, victims? No, no victim has okay. come to us in terms of a complaint, but well, it is a concern. I want to ask you about uh, another issue we've discussed here in this program, too. It's been almost a year and a half since your office started looking at voter fraud in Dallas County. Tell me where that stands. Now, this is, again, people abusing the mail-in ballot uh, process. Do you expect that that investigation will result in any charges? If so, I don't when know might you, that happen? I don't know if you know that we've already uh, charged people. We've already, people have already pled out in terms of voters fraud. We, I mean, we don't broadcast on, it. On the mail-in ballots? On mm -hmm. the mail-in ballots. And we are continuing that investigation. How many? There, there was the, the one guy who was who was caught and you finally found him. Yes. How many and others? He, and he pled out and we're still investigating. We're still looking at, in fact, we were actually meeting on this issue on yesterday. So we we are continuing our investigation. We do have some uh, people, suspects, that we think that very well may be indicted, but we don't want to talk about that because that investigation is still ongoing. There are 22 non-citizens who voted, is that right, according to the election report? Are, are they being investigated? We in that, I don't want to go into the, because there's an ongoing investigation and we are coming very close to the possibility of looking and identifying some additional people. Cal California became the first state to do away with cash bail. Uh, they no longer will hold people based on whether they can put up money or not. Now they have a risk-based system. Uh, should Texas fi take that step? Well, you know that we are, we have a committee that's looking at this bail reform. I want you to know that I am totally committed to bail reform. I don't want any poor person to be in jail, stay in jail because they can't afford it. So we have a committee and we're uh, working with the judges, county commissioners, my office, the public defender's office, and we want a fair bail system and that's what we're committed to. Faith, final seconds here too. Re-election is coming up November. How close will the race be? I don't know. I can't predict it. I'm, I'm hoping you can predict that. I, I can't yet. <laughs> Faith Johnson, the Dallas County uh, District Attorney, good to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you John.